this is our lecture 6 on the series of uh, lectures that we are recording for the subject of financial management in this lecture we are going to start a new topic previously we have covered bond valuation this topic is related to stock valuation so in this specific lecture we are going to understand what do we mean by stock valuation so let's move forward to the contents in this lecture we are going to cover what do we mean by a fundamental and technical analysis and then we will try to understand what dividend discount model is it is a model let me give you an idea of it it is a model that is used to find the intrinsic value of a shares so uh, let's start with the fundamental and technical analysis <clears throat> so what is fundamental analysis a fundamental analysis is a looks uh, analysis looks at the economical or fundamental factors so when we say it looks at the economic or fundamental factors what do we mean by that when we do fundamental analysis what we do is we look at the industry how the industry that specific company is in is uh, is it is that industry doing well or uh, is it is it in it isn't doing well uh, what what type of management that company is having what type of uh, projects that company is investing in and uh, what is its financial condition Say for example, a, uh, the cement. Uh, if you take a company from the cement sector, uh, let's say Lucky Cement Company, then when we would try, we when we would be doing fundamental analysis, what we would be looking at is how that cement industry is doing in uh, uh, in this specific country or in that specific quarter or in that specific year or what is the growth chances of the cement industry say there is some kind of a developmental project going on say the government in that specific year had allocated lots of budget lots of finances to the development developmental sector then that means there would be a lot of construction going on and that would have a positive impact on the cement sector <clears throat> so what we are looking at is the industrial aspect of the um, the cement sector then uh, what kind of management do lucky cement have what kind of projects uh, are they having um, uh, what is their financial position do they have enough liquidity do they have enough um, leverage right so this is the kind of uh, their profitability right so this is the kind of factors that we would be looking in fundamental analysis so the concept of intrinsic value is related to fundamental analysis uh, what what do i mean by that uh, it would be more clear when we understand the technical analysis and let's move forward to technical analysis and then i would compare them so technical analysis look at the price movement of a security and uses this data to predict the future movement so what technical analysis does is it uses the historical data of uh, say for example these share prices of lucky cement right so they are going to use that historical data to predict the future price movement uh, say for example we are trying to buy we are trying to invest in forex foreign exchange so by looking at the uh, uh, price history of uh, uh, US dollar we are going to predict the future price movement of the US dollar so when we are performing analysis on the basis of historical data of prices then what we are doing is we are performing technical analysis when we are, we are looking at the economical or fundamental factor of that um, company then we are performing fundamental analysis so the notion of intrinsic value or intrinsic price is related to fundamental analysis remember when i gave the analogy of uh, buying a used car 
or let me give you another analogy um, let's say you are you want to buy a, a, a mobile phone so it is a used mobile phone and what you are going to do is you are going to assess its uh, its intrinsic value and how you are going to do that based on its uh, specification now based on its ram its uh, rom its uh, processor its uh, brand what you are going to do you are going to come up with an idea of the true value of that product and what basically you have done is you have performed the fundamental analysis by looking at its uh, you know the technical aspects of or the specification of that uh, mobile phone so um, so, so the, no, the notion of intrinsic value is related to the fundamental analysis so technical analysis uh, you know we attempt to measure the securities intrinsic uh, we do not measure the securities intrinsic value but in, instead we use the stock charts uh, or their graphs to identify some pattern or trends that may suggest what a stock will do in future so this is what we we do in technical analysis so when uh, in this chapter the uh, what i mean the intention of uh, giving you the idea of fundamental and technical analysis is is to make you understand that this that this specific topic of uh, dividend discount model or stock valuation comes under the umbrella of fundamental analysis it isn't related to technical analysis so what we are uh, going to perform in this chapter is a part of fundamental analysis so let's move forward <coughs> intrinsic value and stock price we have discussed this idea in our um, bond valuation chapter um, uh, we remember that uh, in bond valuation we were trying to find the intrinsic the fair or the true value of the stock of the bond in this case we are going to find the true value of the uh, share so the similar analogy that i have just given you the the case of the mobile phone you have used its uh, um, specification to identify its true value so we are going to do that in here but uh, but instead of the technical specification we would look at some other aspect of the stock so outside investor corporate insiders and analysts to use variety of approaches to estimate stock in intrinsic value so the idea is the task is the objective is to find this thing this the intrinsic value and when that intrinsic value <coughs> is uh, is greater than the market value then uh, we say that that the stock is undervalued in the market so let me put it this way um, to be comparable with the with our previous lecture so if the market value is less than the intrinsic value we have already discussed this in bond valuation then that is undervaluation when market value is greater than intrinsic value then that would be overvaluation uh, that means uh, that that specific stock is overvalued in the market so when uh, the stock is overvalued in the market obviously we are not going to buy it because um, imagine uh, a mobile phone that you have uh, um, you think that it should be for five hundred dollars and that specific mobile phone is being sold by the owner at say six hundred dollars, so uh, that owner is demanding um, a higher price for that that product. So it is overvalued in the market, and when when something is overvalued, we do not buy it. <laughs> we rather sell it if if we own it. So uh, this would help us in making the decisions. Let's move forward. Uh, so uh, we will start with common stock valuation. But let me give you an idea that why common stock valuation is difficult as compared to the bond valuation. So first thing, the cash flows are not known in advance. See in bond, we get interest. And that interest is known in advance. That coupon rate is known in advance. That coupon amount is known when we are buying that bond. 
so but in in case of um, stock what is our cash flow by the way the cash flow is either dividend that we are going to receive by uh, from the uh, from the corporation or it is the price of the stock when we are going to sell it say i bought it today at 100 and after one year i i'm going to sell it at 150 so this uh, 150 is the price that i'm going to receive at the end of the year this is also not fixed remember in case of bond it was the face value that was fixed we already knew at the time of buying the bond that uh, what the face value will be what with the cash we will receive um, at the end of maturity then dividend the corporation announces dividend um, based on some factors uh, that is a, a, a topic for um, uh, related to corporate finance and advanced topic a dividend policy but uh, but the thing is that it isn't uh, known when when we are buying the stock it is the unknown value so stock valuation is difficult because the cash flows are not known in advance and the life of common stock is forever because of no maturity of common stock so common stock we know it doesn't mature there is a going concern principle um, that we apply so uh, th th there is no maturity time in bond there is a maturity time but in stock we do not have a maturity time so no way to observe a required rate of return of the market so in in case of bond we know that what market interest rate is but in case of stock we do not know there, there is no way to guess this uh, value <clears throat> so moving forward let's uh, look at example you buy uh, you plan to buy a stock of Dichi Khan cement company and sell it after one year so you so you have planned it to hold it for one year that's it you somehow know that the stock will be worth 80 rupees per share so when uh, when you will be selling it after one year it would be worth 80 rupees we have guessed it just to give you an idea but in real time this value wouldn't be known and will pay a dividend of rupees 10 at the end of uh, each year so if the required rate of return is 25 percent then what is the most you will pay for the stock and what is the value of the stock so we have been given a bunch of information and we need to find what should be the value of stock now remember uh, if you have got an idea uh, when we just we studied bond valuation we were using the future cash flow to find the value of bond right that's what we did when we we studied uh, capital budgeting and pvir etc we used again the future cash flow to find the net present value of that project so what we are essentially doing is we are using cash to find the value of some asset or a project the similar concept can be applied to dividend at least in our basic understanding in this basic model that we are going to study the dividend discount model so so the to cash amount that we are going to receive is the 80 rupees at the end of one year and the 10 rupees at one of at the end of one year so we can say that the current present value of this stock would be equal to the present value of dividend plus the present value of this stock price that we are going to receive after one year uh, and we know how do we find present value it is 1 divided by r raised to power 1 and it would be 1 divided by r raised to power 1 so we know this so let's build our model our dividend discount model on the basis of this idea we are going to carry this example further right so we have just understood that if I am going to uh, find the true value of this uh, stock then it would be the um, from our previous understanding it would be the 
present value of dividend plus the present value of the uh, price that we are going to sell it and combine those present values we we have the uh, current price of that stock current value of that stock so this is what uh, what we have written in our previous example right this p1 and d d divided by 1 plus r raised to power n okay now the problem is that we do not know this p1 in previous example we have assumed that the price at the end of one year is going to be 80 rupees but in real life we do not know it the stock market is uh, difficult to predict so how do we know p1 we know that p1 should be again equal to the dividend that we are going to receive at the end of second year its present value plus the present value of p2 so if we do this divided by r raised to power 1 then it must give us the present value of p1 and we can put that value in here so this this is what we got uh, dividend 2 p1 p2 and their present value and we will get p1 remember we haven't used 2 as the exponent why is that so because we are just discounted it for one year so when we would have this p1 we can input that p1 value here and we would have our uh, intrinsic value of the stock but you have realized the issue we do not know p2 right so what we can do we know that p2 should be equal to what d3 its present value plus p3 so so you have guessed it uh, what p2 is equal to it's d3 plus p3 uh, again discounted for uh, one year but again we do not know p3 so you, you, you have got an idea that what the issue is that no matter what we do the price would be unknown but one thing that we know is that a corporation is a going concern and if we assume that that corporation is going to uh, last forever or at least say for a long time period say for example 100 years just to give you an idea then we know that the p100 divided by a 1 plus r raised to power 100 would be theoretically equal to 0 or it would be quite a small value no matter what the price is so based on this what we can do is we can eliminate this aspect of the cash from our model uh, because we uh, you know we have assumed that it is a going concern and this value if um, it, 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 the, the present value would be minimum so based on this we have derived a model where current value of a stock should be equal to the dividend one discounted for one year dividend two discounted for one year and so on and so forth so that so so so, so we have got an idea that the present value of this or a true value or an intrinsic value of a stock is based on its dividend we have derived the idea of dividend discount model and what basically dividend discount model does is it finds the intrinsic value of a stock based on its future dividends I will repeat again dividend discount model is an idea is a model where we find the intrinsic value of a stock by, by discounting all the future dividends of that stock and will not include its future price so just the dividend that's why it got got its name uh, dividend discount model discounting the dividend 
so in next uh, lecture we would look at different types of dividend discount model and we'll try to solve some example that would give you better idea